Good morning, everyone. Uh, thank you very much for attending my PhD dissertation defense today. Uh, I'm Sanjay Vijayaratna, a PhD candidate at Noises Center Wright State University. Uh, my dissertation title is The Framework to Understand Emoji Meaning, Similarity and Sense Disambiguation of Emoji Using EmojiNet. My dissertation committee includes uh, Dr. Amit Sheth, who is my dissertation advisor, uh, Dr. Derek Doran and Dr. P.K. Prasad, uh, and Dr. Wemba Wong, who is joining with us remotely. So, uh, before I jump into my content slides, let me uh, try to give you an overview of what are the problems that we try to solve uh, in this dis dissertation. So, for an example, uh, let's look at this social media post. So, this is an actual social media post uh, that, that uses emoji to replace uh, certain words. So, if you look at uh, how ice emoji has been used in this post, you'll see the first instance of ice emoji replaces the word I and the second instance replaces the word look. So what does this tell us? So this tells us that people use emoji in different you know, textual contexts in, in different ways so that the emoji means different things. So that is something that we would like to explore in this, in this dissertation. So similarly, if uh, I give you a series of emoji pairs uh, and ask you to tell me uh, how, how similar do you think these emoji pairs are, uh, and if I ask you to rate uh, these, uh, the similarity of these emoji pairs from, let's say, 0 to 1, you would probably tell me, okay, the first pair uh, is, you know, 90% they are similar or, you know, 0.9% uh, similar or uh, something like that. Uh, so, uh, we also want to train computers and see whether they can you know, do the same thing, uh, which we call emoji similarity calculation problem. So that is another uh, problem that we would like to uh, explore in this uh, dissertation. Uh, why emoji? So uh, if you look at uh, the growth of emoji, uh, Unicode Emoji Consortium standardized emoji in 2010, even though emoji were introduced in you know, late 1990s. Uh, so after Unicode Consortium standardized emoji, mobile platform uh, providers like Apple and Android started developing their own uh, emoji keyboards. So this is uh, a study uh, done using Instagram data. So this shows us, uh, so this is uh, when Apple introduced its emoji keyboard. And after Apple introduced its emoji keyword, keyboard, Emoji use in Instagram photo comments, you know, rapidly increased, and currently, uh, emoji use in Instagram photo comments, uh, nearly 50% of Instagram posts uh, has at least one emoji in the in their photo comments. So, in another study, people have showed that having an emoji could increase the engagement of. Uh, uh, an Instagram post by up to 15%. So the same study also tells us that people use emoji to replace slang terms on, on Instagram. Uh, not only on Instagram, emoji are popular across you know, many social media platforms. So for an example, in 2015, uh, face with tears of Joe emoji was tweeted 6.6 .6 billion times on, on Twitter. And on the same year, uh, face with tears of Joe emoji was awarded uh, or, or named as the word of the year by the Oxford Dictionary, and it was the first time an emoji was, you know, uh, named as the word of the year. On Facebook, uh, on average, over 60 million emojis are shared on every day, and uh, so these are statistics from uh, 2017, and uh, as of now, uh, a close to 900. Uh, million emojis are shared on Facebook uh, on average per day uh, and on Facebook Messenger 5 billion emojis are shared so you know this 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 shows us people you know use use emoji a lot on social media and now let's look at how people use social you know emoji on social media and and uh, for, for what what purposes so past research tells us uh, that People mainly use emoji to express uh, emotion, sentiment, and sarcasm uh, to, uh, to maintain uh, playful conversations, informal conversations, uh, and also people use emoji to replace slang terms and uh, emoticons as well. Uh, 
Uh, so when it comes to process these emojis in a meaningful way, we have to have uh, some, you know, we have to develop, you know, computer algorithms or programs uh, so that, you know, they can, they can have a sense of, rep, you know, uh, emoji meaning or, or, or have some sort of representation uh, that, could, that it could use to understand uh, the meaning of an emoji. So uh, when it comes to uh, developed algorithms, we change two main problems. <coughs> so the first problem is uh, emoji are not defined with rigid semantics. Because of that, people tend to assign meanings to emoji. And the other problem is there are not enough, I mean not good uh, resources out there on the web that would tell you how a particular emoji should be used. So let's look at these two challenges in a bit more detail. So the first challenge is on uh, the polysemy of emoji. So emoji can have multiple meanings. And let's look at why emoji can have multiple meanings. So if you look at uh, uh, these emojis, so uh, this, uh, these Unicode code points uh, refer to one single you know, emoji. But this is how that same Unicode code point is represented across multiple platforms. So you can clearly see. The same Unicode code point is uh, depicted or, or, or shown differently in different platforms, which could lead to confusion. So this leads people to assign different meanings to emoji. And similarly, different user groups uh, and, and different uh, you know, geographies uh, uh, could also come up with new meanings for emoji. So for an example, in uh, another study, we found that uh, street gang members on Twitter uh, use gas pump emoji to refer to marijuana because gas is a slang term for marijuana. Uh, and uh, it is also uh, noted that uh, folded hands emoji uh, is used uh, uh, to, uh, as a praying symbol in, in, uh, you know, in here and most of the English speaking countries. But uh, in countries like India, it is used as a greeting. Uh, so namaste is a greeting. Uh, so uh, this emoji that you see here is the OK sign emoji. So in English language uh, and English speaking countries, most of the time this emoji is interpreted as uh, OK sign. Uh, but American sign language has a different, you know, uh, different uh, more profane, like uh, profane meaning to it. Uh, so uh, so based on uh, different geographies, different user groups, emoji can have multiple meanings. Uh, the <coughs> other problem uh, is uh, lack of resources that are available on the web. So there are multiple websites that tells you uh, what you know what the Unicode code point of emoji and how it looks like, but there are very little resources that are out there on the web uh, that would tell you little to no resources that are out, uh, that are on the web that would tell you uh, that can tell you how an emoji should be used. Uh, there are certain. Uh, websites that tell you uh, emoji meanings, but that's, that's it. Uh, and there are no uh, resource that, that is out there that we can directly feed into a computer so that computer can you know, understand uh, or, or learn a representation of emoji meaning. So that is one problem that we try to solve here. With that, uh, so, you know, uh, this motivated us to work on this, uh, you know, uh, dissertation topic uh, or this research, uh, general research area. Uh, so, uh, so this is, the, uh, this is my uh, thesis statement. Uh, so, uh, it says machine readable emoji sense repositories can be created and used to enable substantially better understanding of the emoji meaning in text. This enables improved performance of downstream applications such as emoji sense disambiguation and emoji similarity. So um, the basic idea is to uh, develop machine readable emoji dictionaries and uh, use it uh, to solve downstream applications. Why emoji sense disambiguation and emoji similarity? Uh, that is because these two are you know, primary uh, tasks that would have, uh, that can have effect on many other uh, emoji processing applications like sentiment analysis uh, and emoji based search. So I'll, I'll explain, uh, I'll describe these things, uh, you know, in detail later. So uh, with that, let me uh, brief you the contributions of this thesis. They are mainly twofold. We develop uh, 
uh, a machine readable dictionary with uh, a set of APIs and we also have an RDF serialization of that resource and then we use it to solve uh, two downstream uh, applications. Uh, with the limited time I have, I will discuss uh, the creation of EmojiNet and how we use EmojiNet to solve emoji similarity problem in detail and I'll briefly go over emoji sense disambiguation uh, in this talk. So with that, let's move to the first part of the presentation uh, uh, that is about creating uh, this resource. So uh, the problem with uh, the resources that are available online, uh, are we cannot directly feed them into a computer. They are not machine readable, uh, but they do have a lot of uh, interesting information. So for an example, in this study, we looked at many resources and, and we picked up, uh, we, we selected three uh, main resources to consider when building uh, our resource, that is Imogenet. So the first resource that we looked at was the Unicode Consortium website. So Unicode Consortium is the governing body that standardized emoji. So uh, in their website, they list very valuable information about emoji, such as Unicode code points, uh, emoji names. They also have uh, a list of possible meanings for emoji. Those are keywords called CLDR keywords. Uh, in this picture, you don't you don't see them because they don't list those uh, on their web page anymore. But uh, they have moved it into a different project. So, and they also show you how different uh, how the same emoji uh, you know is shown across different platforms as well. Emojipedia is also a privately run uh, website, uh, which uh, which provides very valuable information. So. Uh, Apart from what you see in uh, Unicode Consortium website, you would see uh, things like uh, related emoji and uh, you know what are the uh, emoji depictions of different uh, versions of iOS and so on at uh, Emojipedia. Emoji Dictionary is uh, a crowd-sourced resource. So it is basically uh, a Wikipedia but for emoji meanings. So uh, the way that this website has set up is that uh, uh, the creators have uploaded the emojis to this website, just pictures, and users can go and put any uh, you know meaning uh, for that emoji. Uh, and uh, one interesting thing that you see in this website is uh, emoji meanings are uh, part of speech tags, so they are listed with their part of speech tags. But since this is a crowdsourced website, there are a lot of noisy data uh, in this as well. So uh, we wanted to integrate these resources and come up with a machine readable dictionary. Uh, but we, we faced a lot of challenges. So as I said, Emoji Dictionary did not have uh, the Unicode code points listed, just emoji, uh, uh, you know, pictures of emoji. So we could, we could not easily integrate them with uh, other resources. Uh, so we had to use some Im image processing techniques. Uh, and at the same time, uh, Emojipedia had a lot of uh, incorrect, uh, sorry, Emoji Dictionary had a lot of incorrect uh, information on emoji meaning. So we had to filter those out. Uh, and none of these websites were, uh, you know, they were, uh, they were, none of these websites uh, were linked with uh, machine readable dictionaries, so we had to do that as well. So, what is Emojinet? So, Emojinet is basically a, a, a resource uh, that that consists of emoji meanings for unique uh, for emojis that are standardized uh, standardized by uh, Unicode Emoji Consortium. So, uh, apart from these emoji meanings, we also provide uh, context word expansions uh, that, that we learn from uh, large corpuses of Twitter, large corpora of Twitter and Google News. Uh, we also provide platform specific emoji meanings for a group of uh, 40 emojis. And we also have a restful uh, uh, web services uh, so that you can easily integrate this resource with your application. So when coming up with this resource, we uh, first we had to decide what type of information should be you know stored under each emoji. So we came up with this nine tuple notation. So in for each emoji in EmojiNet, you would find 
uh, things like Unicode code points, emoji name, emoji short code. So emoji short codes are very uh, helpful when you want to use uh, programming APIs because program uh, you cannot remember emoji Unicode code points, but short codes are very easy to remember. Uh, emoji definitions. Uh, and, and keywords, so these are keywords that we extract from uh, Unicode Consortium uh, CLDR uh, list. And uh, how emojis are shown across platforms, uh, related emojis, and uh, we also have uh, a, a very shallow category hierarchy for emoji uh, that we extract from Unicode uh, code point. And most importantly, uh, these emoji meaning keywords and their uh, part of speech tags that we call sense labels. And uh, uh, there are sense definitions that we extract from uh, BabelNet, which is the uh, most, uh, so BabelNet is a machine, multilingual, uh, machine readable uh, dictionary. So let's look at how we build EmojiNet. So uh, for that, we had to integrate several resources. Uh, integrating Unicode emoji code, uh, emoji list, with Emojipedia was not very difficult because both of them had the presence of uh, Unicode code points, so it was uh, just a matter of uh, integrating the two resources based on uh, Unicode code points. But uh, Emoji Dictionary did not have uh, Unicode code points, so because of that we had to use some image processing techniques. Uh, and then once we uh, once we extract uh, Emoji sense labels from uh, Emoji Dictionary, we had to link them with uh, you know, machine readable definitions uh, in BabelNet. So for that, we used word sense disambiguation techniques. So uh, let me go into uh, details of how we did this integration. So integrating Emoji Dictionary, uh, uh, for, for, to integrate Emoji Dictionary uh, with other resources, we used a nearest neighborhood based image processing algorithm. So basically we had two sets of emoji, one, uh, one that we downloaded from Emoji Dictionary and uh, another set of emojis that are coming from Unicode Emoji Consortium and Emojipedia. So what we did was, first we resized each and every emoji image by, uh, to 300 by 300 pixels of size. Then each emo image was divided into 25 sections of 25 by 25 uh, pixel regions. And for each region, we calculated their average color density, RGB you know, uh, pixel values, and came up with an average color density value. Then that value was compared across you know, the same, pos the color, average color intensity values of the same positions in you know, all the other images. Based on that, we come up with uh, a similarity measure for each and every uh, image in our uh, data set. So the least, the, uh, the least uh, dissimilar images were then uh, considered a match. Uh, so this data set had the presence of Unicode code points and this did not. So once a match is found, we uh, you know, integrated the two data sets using their uh, Unicode code points. So then, uh, so when we do this step, uh, we were able to extract sense labels for each and every Unicode code point. Then it was uh, a matter of how to, in, you know, how to link these sense labels with the uh, BabelNet sense uh, definitions, which are machine readable. So for that, we used uh, a word sense uh, disambiguation approach. Uh, sorry, sorry. Uh, so this is the uh, filtration process. So uh, sorry. Once once we extract the um, emoji sense labels. We had to filter them, filter them because uh, there were a lot of noisy data available. So for that, we use BabelNet as a resource. Uh, so for an example, um, so this is uh, all the sense labels that we extracted for the uh, face with years of Joe emoji. So you would see uh, uh, things like uh, uh, laugh noun, pick noun, and, and so on that we extract from emoji dictionary for this emoji. Uh, and also, we have uh, you know CLDR keywords defined in Unicode emoji list, uh, but they are not part of speech tag. But for our experiment, we need part of speech tags. So what we did was we automatically generated part of speech tags. So for each keyword, we would generate three possible uh, sense labels: face noun, face verb, and face adjective. But not all these uh, uh, sense labels are valid. 
according to English language. So to do that validation, what we did was, was we check, we cross check <coughs> the sense label against BabelNet dictionary. So if it is a, a valid sense label, then BabelNet will have an entry. So otherwise we will discard them. So in this case, uh, we would remove face adjective. So similarly, for for these uh, Im images, uh, sorry, emojis, you would also find uh, uh, sense labels that are uh, valid part of speeches, uh, but they are actually not related to this emoji. So we remove those as well in a later step. So like, uh, I mean, in, by following these steps, we filter out um, the valid emoji sense labels. Then we wanted to uh, assign machine readable sense definitions for these sense labels. So for that, we used a word sense disambiguation experiment. We used a corpus called Edme SC corpus. The sense labels in this corpus are already annotated with uh, BabelNet sense, uh, machine readable sense uh, IDs. So what we did was we used two uh, word sense disambiguation baseline. Uh, the first one is called uh, most frequent sense. Uh, and the other one is called more, uh, most popular sense. We use most frequent sense uh, because it is uh, one of the hard to beat baselines in uh, word sense disambiguation research. So uh, we, like, I'm not going to go into details, uh, I'll, but I'll give you a brief, you know, uh, overview. So what we did was we, for each sense label, we calculate the most frequent sense, and then we would assign it as the uh, sense label, uh, machine readable uh, ID for that particular sense label. If a particular sense label is not present in the MASC corpus, we would calculate the most popular sense and uh, assign it the uh, uh, sense label. So uh, let me uh, show you the evaluation statistics for these two methods. So uh, for the image processing algorithm, uh, we achieved uh, close to 97% accuracy. Uh, even though our algorithm was, you know, uh, simple, it worked very well uh, for our experiment because uh, emojis, most most of the time emojis have uh, two to three characters. So, uh, but we, we failed uh, in cases like this. Uh, so here if you look at these clock images, uh, the only difference you see is uh, where these arms are positioned, then the rest is the same. So we will not be able to do well in cases like that. We also uh, uh, did the word sense disambiguation experiments using most frequent sense baseline and most popular sense baseline and we were able to achieve you know decent uh, accuracies there. And this is how we uh, disambiguated nouns, verbs and adjectives once the uh, two methods are combined. Uh, yeah, in summary, what we did was we created a machine readable uh, resource. Uh, I did not explain how we expand the uh, uh, sense definition using uh, word embedding models here. Uh, but we did that and uh, all of our data sets are available uh, in this uh, location. Uh, and the, you, can, you can download them uh, from our website, emojinet.noises.org. So uh, then let me discuss how we use this resource to solve uh, emoji understanding tasks that we were interested in. So uh, the first uh, problem that we are going to look at is called the emoji similarity problem. So why did we want to work on this problem? So emoji similarity uh, has a lot of different applications. Uh, so uh, for an example, uh, it can be uh, a very important uh, uh, parameter for uh, emoji-based search. So if you look at emoji-based search, uh, emoji-based search is getting popular now. So uh, very recently, YouTube Music started support uh, uh, searching uh, uh, the music uh, database using emoji. So we all know in uh, uh, information retrieval, uh, to improve the recall of a search engine, you can use uh, related keywords for a, for a search query. So similarly, you could uh, use related emoji uh, uh, to improve emoji-based search. So emoji similarity can, can play a role there. And uh, currently, Unicode Emoji Consortium has standardized close to 3,000 emoji. How would you show all these emojis in small handheld devices? So you have to come up with meaningful emoji groups. You know. uh, 
so emoji similarity can be used to come up with meaningful emoji groups so that you can you know optimize your mobile keyboards so emoji domains are also getting very popular now uh, so uh, if a particular domain is already taken, you can use emoji similarity to come up with alternate emoji domains. So emoji similarity has a lot of interesting applications. So that's why we wanted to study this problem. So let's look at, look at how we define this problem. Uh, so we define this uh, as follows. Uh, measuring the semantic similarity of emojis such that the measure reflects the likeliness of their meaning interpretation of intended use. So there are two different ways to uh, come up with an emoji similarity measure. One is based on how emoji look like. It, we call it the pixel-based emoji similarity. Uh, and the other one is the meaning-based emoji similarity. We did not want to use the pixel-based emoji similarity because emojis look different across multiple platforms. So defining a pixel-based similarity would be difficult uh, because how they look across platforms. So instead, we wanted to focus on the meaning of, of emoji and to come up with uh, notation of emoji similarity based on emoji meaning. Yeah. So we looked at past research so and, and, and found three uh, related works. So the first one uh, is called Emo 350 so, uh, by Francesco Barbary. So, it's, uh, so what they did was they collected a, a, a large Twitter corpus and learned word, word embeddings using distributional semantics and uh, then try to come up with uh, emoji, emoji embeddings using the word embeddings that they learn. Uh, so uh, they are emoji similarity method is based on uh, pure distribution semantics. Then uh, there's another work called emoji to web by Eastner and others. So what they did was uh, similar to Barbary, uh, they also learned distributional semantics but then uh, they extracted the uh, emoji names from Unicode Consortium uh, website and replaced the words in the emoji names using their corresponding word embeddings so that they sort of uh, tried to incorporate some knowledge into their uh, embeddings, basically emoji names. Uh, and, and that is the second uh, related work. Paul and others also did very similar experiments to Barbary and others. They also came up with uh, a jacquard uh, similarity based uh, emoji similarity uh, measure that is very similar to uh, what we uh, did in our ICWSM paper uh, you know based on uh, what we could extract from emoji but I'm not going to discuss uh, that in this uh, talk so uh, how did we define uh, emoji similarity so if you look at what we uh, have in emoji net there are three main things that, or three different types of information uh, that we can use towards come up with uh, uh, emoji meaning. So, uh, so we have emoji, emoji descriptions so, uh, that we call sense descriptions. So these are basically uh, text that tells how emoji look across different platforms and you know why this emoji was created and so on. So we extract these texts from Emojipedia. Uh, then we also have emoji sense labels. They are key, uh, uh, emoji meaning keywords and they are part of speech tags. So we extract these from Unicode Emoji Consortium and Emoji Dictionary both. Uh, and we also have uh, the, the machine readable uh, dictionary definitions that uh, for each and every uh, emoji sense label that we extracted from BabelNet. So that we call here sense definition. So you can use these three, uh, you know, text elements for each emoji to come up with uh, some emoji meaning representation. So, so DI is syntactic and definition is semantic. The, uh, so it literally it, say it, what it most is of the time DI is uh, syntactic and at this uh, so sometimes you would find some uh, semantics there but not not all the time most of the time it is syntactic and 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 how it is shown in different platforms and so on yeah you, you, so you can say that yeah so uh, now the idea is to learn distributional semantic models and uh, then uh, try to extract the uh, information that we have in emoji net 
and somehow incorporate that uh, knowledge into distribution semantics so that we have a sort of a hybrid uh, system where we have both the good things from uh, knowledge based approaches and uh, distribution semantic approaches and then to evaluate this method uh, we also created a new data set with uh, 508 emoji pairs uh, that we call emosim 508 so this is how we learn word embedding so basically we use a script skipgram skipgram model uh, using to, two corpora uh, we had a, a twitter corpora corpus of uh, 147 million uh, tweets that had at least one emoji in them uh, and we also uh, use Google News Corpus to learn uh, word, uh, word embeddings. Then, uh, as I said earlier, we had three types of you know, definitions that we could extract from ImojiNet, and each of them had words. So uh, what we did was, we took each and every definition, replaced uh, the words in those definitions with their corresponding word vectors we learned from uh, you know, Twitter-based uh, Twitter corpus and Google News corpus, and then we, we average to come up with one final emoji embedding for, uh, for an emoji. So we use two corpora and use two different, uh, three different types of definitions, and we also created a fourth definitions, definition by taking all the words in all three def, you know, definitions. So in, in total, we have four different uh, definition types and two different corpora. So for each emoji, we could come up with eight different emoji embeddings so then uh, we uh, we wanted to uh, evaluate our you know uh, algorithm so for that as i said we did not have a good data set so emoji 50 data set was only uh, a total of 50 emoji pairs and 25 of them were hand picked and 25 of them were random so the problem with uh, creating a data set like that is that uh, there are close to 3,000 emojis, so when you generate emoji pairs randomly, uh, those emoji pairs does not mean anything most of the time. So they are, uh, so that type of data set is not really meaningful uh, when it comes to run, uh, evaluate uh, emoji similarity experiments. So what we did instead was we look at how emoji are correlated in the data set that we had. So we had a, a Twitter corpus of 147 million tweets. We looked at uh, the most co-occurring uh, emojis, and then we uh, took uh, the the 508 emoji, the first 508 uh, top co-occurring emoji pairs. Uh, we uh, stopped at 508 uh, because uh, these 508 emoji pairs actually covered 25% of the data set. This had a very long tail, so. So now if you go to uh, 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 the, 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 the last emoji pairs that we have, you would see still they are meaningful, like right here. So they are not totally random. Uh, they are not hand-picked either. Uh, but in this way, we could be able to come up with a uh, meaningful uh, data set to do our uh, experiments. And uh, you know, once we select emoji pairs, we asked, uh, 10 human analysts to uh, evaluate this data set for similarity and uh, relatedness. So uh, we asked two questions uh, from them. We asked them uh, whether they would uh, use one emoji to replace the other. Uh, if so, they are, simi uh, they are similar. Uh, then we also asked, would you use the two emoji in a tweet or a sentence? in which case they are sort of related. So we asked them to rate uh, uh, their answers to these two questions based on uh, 0 to 4 scale. Then we averaged uh, the, 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 the responses that we received to come up with uh, final uh, emoji similarity scores for the 508 emoji pairs. Then uh, we calculate for, for the uh, 508 emoji pairs. We had for uh, for each emoji we had eight embeddings. Then for each pair we calculated uh, the cosine similarity of the two uh, two embeddings. Well, two into uh, eight. Uh, then come up with uh, eight different similarity score for each pair. 
then we use Spearman's uh, rank correlation coefficient to uh, see how well the Moji similarity method uh, measure that we calculated aligned with the uh, human generated Moji similarity scores. Then we notice that since labels uh, based Moji similarity uh, uh, emoji embeddings align best uh, with uh, the human annotators uh, uh, human uh, human annotators uh, scores. Uh, we also wanted to see how well our embeddings would do in a real world task because at that time there were already uh, two other previous uh, emoji embeddings that were out there. So we wanted to see how well we, our embeddings do compared to them. So for that we, we ran another sentiment analysis experiment. So this is a benchmark test uh, uh, that is out there. Uh, so basically this has uh, tweets uh, close to 13,000 uh, 13, tweets, uh, English tweets, uh, and uh, close to 2,300 of uh, them has emojis in them. So in each tweet, words were replaced by their corresponding uh, <coughs> word embeddings learned from a particular corpus, and the emojis were uh, replaced by the emoji embeddings that we learned. So then, uh, when we ran this experiment, we noticed that our emoji embeddings outperformed the previous emoji embedding. So what now? So in our previous experiment, that we, we we saw that our embeddings align with human agreement. Then we in with this experiment, we could show that our embeddings are better than previous embeddings. So we, you know, uh, if you use our embeddings in real world tasks, you can achieve uh, better performance. Okay, so. Yeah. So we are talking about sense label, right? Yes, sense, yes, the other. yes, sense so label. So is it the case that sense label is one or two words while the others are long sentences and so yes, there so are that other is, words that dilute it? So yes, it's yes, that's exactly the case. So uh, in general for uh, NLP tasks, when you have more and more words, algorithms tend to perform better. But what we, uh, I mean it is the case even uh, in our emoji sense disambiguation uh, experiments, I'll discuss that in a minute. Uh, but for this particular experiment, because sense labels contain very you know particular uh, keywords right. that are directly associated with emoji right. meanings, uh, they tend to perform the other uh, one, better. Yeah, the other words will dilute it. Yes, so. that's 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 the essence of this key, <laughs> key takeaway slide. Uh, yeah, and all our data sets are available uh, again online. Uh, then I'll briefly go over emoji sense disambiguation uh, experiment. Uh, again, uh, emoji sense dis so in emoji sense disambiguation, what we are trying to do is given a sentence uh, where you have emojis in them. Can we come up with the meaning of that emoji uh, automatically by using a computer program? Uh, so this is how we define uh, emoji sense disambiguation problem. So we define this. Uh, so this is the definition from our. ICWSM paper, but we also had a similar de definition in our SOC Info paper uh, one year earlier. Uh, and uh, Miller and others uh, reported that uh, this is a, uh, a difficult problem to solve in, in, in their paper. So uh, the problem with emoji sense disambiguation as of now is that it is very difficult to come up with uh, a label data set so that one could you know, attempt to solve this problem in a supervised setting. Because there are close to 3,000 emojis and you know, in our resource we have close to 12, uh, 13,000 emoji meanings. So how can you come up with you know, uh, a data set? So it will be a really difficult task to do. But we already built a tool called EmojiNet that has uh, emoji meanings. So we can use the emoji meanings available in our tool to you know, uh, solve this pr uh, problem in a knowledge-based setting. So that's what we try to do. So uh, here's a you know uh, example uh, that uh, that is coming from uh, one of one of our papers. So you have two tweets, two tweets, uh, both has the prayer hands or folded hands emoji, uh, and for each uh, so for this prayer hands or folded hands emoji. There are multiple definitions uh, that are out there in EmojiNet, but here are two uh, definitions that uh, we extracted from EmojiNet. And these are the words uh, that we extracted from uh, 
the definitions uh, in Emojinet. So these, these words are coming from uh, BabelNet. So then what we did was we used uh, an algorithm called Simplified Lesk. So basically what it does is uh, if you want to disambiguate uh, this uh, term, you check how well the, the nearby words overlap with the, the, the definitions coming from a knowledge base. So based on the word overlap, we, we were able to assign prey uh, meaning for this emoji and high fi meaning for this emoji. So that's the idea. So we did this experiment for a, a set of 25 emojis that are uh, uh, quite uh, often misunderstood uh, on social media platforms. And uh, we were able to achieve uh, an overall accuracy of close to 51% uh, uh, you know, when we did this experiment. Uh, we notice uh, two main things. So uh, here we did uh, context word expansions using uh, Twitter word embeddings and Google News word embeddings, and we learned that uh, when you when you expand the context words, uh, the disambiguation uh, tends to work better. That aligns with previous uh, words and disambiguation research findings as well. And also we noticed that Twitter-based embeddings work you know, work better. So if you look at uh, our, uh, tra uh, you know, testing uh, data set or annotated data set that we use for evaluation, they are tweets. So when you have words that are similar to tweets, you know, uh, your algorithm would, would work better. So in other words, this tells uh, uh, applications that are uh, specifically designed for well-formed tests would not, text would not work with informal text. text. So, uh, in conclusion, uh, what we did in this, uh, what we studied in, the, in this dissertation uh, is um, we looked at um, building machine readable uh, emoji resources. So, we came up with a resource called EmojiNet, and then we used that resource to solve uh, emoji, uh, downstream emoji uh, understanding tasks. Uh, we selected two tasks. That is emoji similarity and sense disambiguation. We selected these tasks because they, these two tasks have uh, multiple applications uh, for a uh, lot of uh, emoji, you know, multiple uses in a lot of uh, emoji applications. And uh, we also show that uh, we could uh, outperform the state of art uh, in uh, uh, in these two uh, tasks using uh, uh, the knowledge that we have in emoji net resource. Uh, we also have uh, we also identified some limitations with uh, uh, the the methods that we did uh, that, that 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 we developed. So, for an example, uh, when we were uh, looking at emoji sense disambiguation experiments, we noticed that uh, some uh, some very valuable emoji meanings were not included in emoji name. So, uh, the, uh, those those meanings. Uh, tend to be uh, slang terms most of the time. So for an example, uh, for, for, uh, for one emoji that we try to disambiguate, uh, we noticed that a lot of people use that emoji uh, to represent uh, uh, like excitement, like oh my god and so on. But an, an OMG is, is listed as a, a keyword in Unicode emoji, emoji Consortium website. But it was not available in BabelNet because of that. Uh, during in one, uh, during our filtration process, we removed that keyword. So because of that, we think when words are not present in uh, BabelNet, we also want to check whether they they are slang terms because emoji are also used as you know replacements for slang terms. So we we. We propose that if we can uh, link slang term dictionaries with EmojiNet, that could uh, solve these types of problems. And we we would also like to uh, use our emoji uh, embeddings that we learned in our emoji similarity calculations in uh, emoji-based search applications. So so far, there's there's no data set that is out there. But you know, once uh, people start using emoji-based search, you know. Hopefully, we would be able to uh, do this experiment in future. <clears throat> so, similarly, uh, we did not consider uh, cross-platform specific. Uh, sorry, uh, we didn't didn't consider platform-specific emoji meanings in our emoji sense disambiguation uh, experiments. 
so uh, our data set was data set consists of tweets and uh, each tweet object has an attribute called source that would tell you uh, the platform uh, where that tweet was originated from so you can use this source attribute uh, uh, in, in, in our future experiments to improve the you know accuracy of uh, emoji sensitive ambiguation uh, experiment uh, but the problem is source at attribute is not present in each and every uh, tweet uh, yeah so that's what I wanted to cover so let me uh, briefly go over my stay at noises and the things I did so, so before you get that so um, <coughs> one area that I'm most interested in is how understanding of emoji improves the understanding or understanding of the content Content is text plus emoji, uh, the Instagram uh, images plus emoji. How far along you got there, and, and what could you, okay. you know, what so could you do that others are work going to work on? It? For yeah. example, you work on you know food images. Is there something okay. you can? Yeah. So uh, in this dissertation, uh, the the focus was on text data, uh, but. Uh, one of the interns that we uh, collaborated with, Anurag, recently mm -hmm. used ImojiNet definitions to uh, do a similar uh, experiment uh, for Im image data. Mm -hmm. And uh, it is accepted uh, at uh, Web Intelligence. So uh, he, he will present that work uh, in this year's Web Intelligence conference. So certainly you can use these uh, definitions to uh, you know, develop applications for images as well, but uh, it was not the focus of this study. But certainly, you can do that. And actually, there's one word that is out there. Okay, but you know, I mean, and I'm also very interested in seeing this, you know, carved out for a very specific application. Could it be, you know, um, in disaster coordination? Could it be uh, depression on suicide? Could it be yeah, so, some, something that is very specific? Where, in fact, some human. Um, Curation may be done in identification of just the most relevant one. Yeah. Uh, maybe in the active learning, uh, this communication can be done by human because uh, we, are, we are already dealing with a few that, but that are often used, meaningful, but contextually relevant only in those. We did, uh, we did some uh, data analysis uh, to see how depressed users would use emoji. <coughs> Uh, and we noticed that a uh, lot of uh, self-identified uh, depressed users who would use, uh, who would feed, uh, and who suffer from uh, eating disorders, mm. uh, had big face emoji in their Twitter profile description. Mm -hmm. uh, we don't have uh, like very good data to back it up, but when we were looking at Twitter profile descriptions, we notice these things. Mm. So certainly you can do studies and you can you know, uh, use the definitions in ImojiNet to understand mm. those things better. Can you characterize uh, how you use Big Force Emoji often? Yeah, I mean you can do that but uh, on top of my head I don't, I don't know whether we have depression related uh, meanings for pigs mm. that is saved on our, day, uh, our resource. Mm. So I mean, certainly you can, you know, have those. Mean I mean, if you if you have those meanings in Imagine, yeah, you can do that. I have clearly seen, uh, you know, interesting use users in, in, in different domains. Mm. So, yeah. Hey, did you have any slides on if I ignore uh, emojis, what's the precision recall, and if I include emojis, what's the precision recall? Uh, Just to show that processing images makes a big difference. I, I might, I, yeah, that was an interesting uh, problem that I initially wanted to work on when I was working on uh, Twitter words and disambiguation. So we discussed this with uh, Dr. Pushpak Bhattacharya as well. Uh, you know, how an image would um, help to disambiguate text and all. But I, I don't think you can. No, use my question the, is very simple. I just said, if you just strip emojis, hmm. process text. This is what happened. Yeah. Had emojis and things improved. I mean, just very simple mm -hmm. motivational kind of thing. Maybe yes. Maybe so, to have it somewhere early on. Uh, yeah, I, I might be able to come up with those uh, examples in, in this experiment, sentiment analysis, yeah. but I don't have it uh, right now with me. 
Are you maybe good for yeah, motivation? Yeah, yeah. I'll definitely uh, include those in my uh, dissertation, Dr. Sarves. Thanks for that section. Uh, yeah, so uh, uh, during my stay here, I got to, uh, you know, publish my work in, you know, uh, different conferences and I, I, I was able to uh, co-author with a lot of you in this room. Uh, I got a chance to work on funding proposals. Uh, some of them got funded, some of, the, some of them uh, did not. Uh, and I also got a chance to mentor students. So uh, I, uh, I worked with Lakshika and uh, I also worked with Anurag uh, during uh, his 2017 summer internship. And I also got to uh, uh, do internships uh, and I was also fortunate to win a couple of awards as well during my stay here. Uh, and uh, apart from that, uh, I got to work, uh, I got to volunteer uh, as well. So uh, uh, I was a co-editor for, uh, I'm, I'm a co-editor for ACM Transactions in Social Computing Special Issue for Emoji Understanding with Dr. Shed. And we also co-organized uh, the first Emoji uh, Understanding Workshop at ICWSM this year. Uh, I have uh, given uh, invited talks at, uh, I mean, uh, on, on this topic uh, at places like EmojiCon and so on. Uh, I have also given a tutorial on Emoji Understanding and uh, I was also uh, able to provide my services as a reviewer and a PC member for a lot of uh, 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 conferences as well. And it's a list of my publication. and. Uh, Again, uh, our work was, so the work I presented here was covered by uh, media uh, articles. So uh, here I have listed all the media articles that, uh, uh, that covered our work. Uh, and with that, let me move to uh, acknowledgement part. And uh, I'm really lucky to uh, have uh, these four people uh, and, uh, you know, a lot, lot of other professors and, and students uh, with whom I got to work with during this day. So I am I'm thankful for uh, Dr. Shef, who is my uh, dissertation advisor. Uh, so from the day I first emailed him until the day uh, I defended my thesis, uh, he was right behind me, uh, helping me every possible way. Uh, he was uh, very patient with me and uh, he he let me work on uh, pretty much everything I wanted to do in my state, which is not uh, very common in other schools, I know. And uh, I mean, uh, I, I think that's, uh, that's what led me to work on a topic like uh, emoji. Uh, so he was very supportive when I came up with this idea as well. Uh, then, uh, you know, not only that, uh, he has, uh, you know, uh, advised me in many different other aspects like uh, communication, uh, how to do a presentation, networking, and team teamwork. So, yeah, so I'm really thankful for all the help I received from him. Uh, Dr. Doran uh, was also uh, a, a big part of the work uh, that we conducted in this in this dissertation. So uh, I, you know, uh, I remember. Uh, writing papers with him was not very easy, very intense. Uh, he would, you know, uh, he would push me towards my edge and, you know, he would make sure that I, I do everything uh, possible to, uh, you know, come up with the best uh, final draft that we can write. Uh, so uh, he was also, uh, uh, you know, a uh, very nice person. I could always go and discuss things with him, and I also thank Dr. Shet for encourage, uh, you know, those types of interaction with other faculty. Uh, so I'm extremely thankful for him as well. Dr. Prasad is also uh, another uh, professor that I worked with uh, when I when I first came here. So I, uh, he was a co-author of uh, the very first paper that uh, I actively involved in. So with with Kalpa and you and Dr. Shet. Uh, so, yeah, a very humble person, and uh, you can always go to him uh, and, and ask questions. And we we had had a lot of uh, interesting uh, 
thought-provoking discussion so and now I'm really thankful for him and he has read many of my papers uh, you know, <laughs> and, and reviewed those for me uh, he was not uh, even in he was not uh, the fourth of those uh, papers he was he was very nice to read and you know give me feedback so uh, yeah I'm, I'm really thankful for all the help I received from you uh, Dr. Saad uh, and Dr. Member Wong uh, a good friend of mine and then uh, now he's in uh, my committee um, he was the one who suggested that I should start working with Lakshika so, <laughs> so uh, whenever we have uh, you know uh, tough times we would go uh, discuss so I remember I discussed many things with Bembo he would say how he felt similar uh, situations and what he did to you know come out of those situations um, so uh, again, uh, he was there uh, motiv motivating me all this time. So, uh, one, you know, once I uh, have him in my, uh, no, I think after his graduation, uh, he would probably sign every email that he would send me with, you need to graduate. So that's his signature. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, he was, uh, you know, really pushing me uh, to do. To, to, good things and uh, he was also, uh, I mean all these people were also uh, very helpful uh, during my job search as well. Uh, so I'm really thankful uh, for that member. And let me also uh, talk briefly about uh, the mentors and collaborators I had. So uh, the first person that I worked here uh, or mentored me was uh, Dr. Ajit Ranabhavo who is working at Amazon now. So I worked with him uh, for a period of six months. Uh, on uh, semantic annotations, uh, he was a good friend, and uh, pretty much uh, he, like he, <laughs> he, he was sort of, sort of uh, a parent to me when I first moved in here. So he was very helpful for me to settle down here, and you know, uh, yeah. And uh, Dr. Pratik Jain. So um, uh, I remember he gave the first idea for for me and Kalper to uh, to work on. Uh, a problem related to linked open data which led to a paper uh, and it was a part of uh, Kalper's uh, dissertation as well so he was very helpful uh, you know mentoring us uh, at, at the early stage of our PhDs where you know we were pretty naive at that time uh, so uh, I would also like to mention uh, Dr. Pawan Kapanpati with whom I worked for a couple of years uh, he, he played a huge role uh, 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 for me to uh, to, to motivate me to work on social media research and uh, then he also uh, uh, helped me to find my very first internships uh, at the Insight Center so I'm thankful for him uh, and uh, Dr. Bahar Ahiravi and uh, Dr. Rajaraman Kanagasabhai and Dr. Shanali Krishnamurti were my mentors uh, at, at different places where I interned so I thank them as well uh, Dr. Kalpa Gunaratna and Lakshika Balasurya uh, were two of my colleagues that I collaborated here, so uh, I, 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 I had really good time working with them. Uh, and Dr. Raminta and Dr. Robert Carlsen are here, so uh, we worked on, uh, 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 and Dr. Uh, Francois Lamy. Uh, so we all worked on uh, Ibra Krenz project, so, uh, and we had really nice uh, time. Uh, I, I also worked with you guys uh, during, uh, a uh, couple of project proposals as well. Uh, yeah, one of them got funded, then you know that became uh, the Ida Friends project, uh, and they are here today, and I'm really thankful for them as well. So I learned a lot from you guys as well. Uh, so working, writing proposals were very intense with Dr. Carlson. So he would go and ask each and every line, uh, you know, for us to explain, and you know, so we really. Uh, learn how to express our ideas very in, 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 in basic plain terms so that anyone can understand so I uh, yeah, thank you so much for uh, all these experiences uh, I also work with Anurag Lendula uh, so uh, we have some uh, uh, publications proving so hopefully we can submit them uh, very soon uh, I also work with uh, Dr. Uh, Jack Dustin for PSN project so uh, it was a new experience for me so yeah I'm thankful for him as well last but not least all the colleagues at Noises so uh, it was great uh, working with you all uh, I have collaborated with many of you uh, if not you have 
read my papers, you know, given me feedback, or else you have helped me uh, to 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 annotate some of uh, our data sets and, and you know uh, data for my experiments. So. Uh, you know, if I have achieved uh, something, uh, you know, the credit goes to everyone in this room. Uh, so you have played a part of that too. So I'm really thankful for that, and, uh, and, and I hope I'll get to work with some of you in future. Uh, yeah, finally, uh, let me also thank the uh, funding organizations, uh, Office of Criminal Justice Services, National Institute uh, of Health, and National Science Foundation. And let me also thank ASTAR Research and Insight Center uh, for uh, supporting me during my internships. With that, uh, I'll stop my presentation. If you have questions, feel free to shoot them. Thank you. So uh, the reason that we uh, pick the so if you look at the 25 uh, emoji that we you know pick those are actually uh, heavily used emojis and at the same time they are heavily misunderstood and if you look at the sense distribution for those emojis there are like a lot of variations of senses as well so that is what why it is difficult to come up with. Uh, 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 an annotated data set uh, that you can use for, uh, uh, I mean, that you can attempt to solve this problem in a supervised setting. And if you look at uh, these emojis, they have different representations across different uh, platforms. So if you want to do platform specific emoji sense distribution, it will be even difficult. Yeah, so that's why it makes a really difficult task. Uh, but if you look at our resource for these. 25 emojis and 15 more, we also capture platform specific uh, emoji meaning. So it, would, uh, it could actually easen uh, your uh, effort to, to, to solve this problem. Yeah. Yeah. Any more questions? So you did talk about uh, mapping emojis to the emotion categories. Any, any specific comments on, on, on that? Okay. Uh, yes, yeah, so we didn't really look at uh, how emoji, no, we, we didn't address that in this uh, dissertation. Uh, but there, there's work out there that try, you know, that tries to map emojis into emotions. So even if you look at uh, Wembo's paper on uh, creating that emoji, uh, emotion, oh no, it didn't have emotion, but had emoticon. But uh, yeah, now, I mean, there are papers that actually tries to do that. Uh, there was one uh, published in our uh, workshop as well. So there's, there's, there's work uh, that is out there. So uh, mainly uh, to, uh, so those works are mostly focused on face emojis. Because that, those are the things that would convey emotion most, of, you know, let's say 90% of the time. And if you go to uh, Unicode Consortium website, they also have uh, a listing of emoji uh, group under certain em uh, certain emotions, uh, but we did not particularly look into uh, that 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 issue. So, so you feel that other people have done that work, or do you think that's the future work? Uh, people have attempted to solve. I mean, people have worked on that. Uh, so, uh, I can at least. Uh, now, I mean, if I go back to my references list, mm -hmm. I could at least, uh, you know, give you two or three papers that, uh, I mean, there's one in our workshop as well, yeah. But there, I mean, uh, there could be still room for improvement. No, I have one question yes. uh, about uh, adapting with, like, maybe new, new emotions and new yes. things. Yes. Uh, is it, like, uh, automated, uh, something like a continuous process? Or yeah, so it's, it's a good question. So um, if you look at how we build this tool, 
uh, we extract. So, uh, so far, we only support uh, emojis that are standardized, standardized by uh, Unicode Emoji Consortium. So what happens is when Unicode Emoji Consortium standardize uh, emojis, they would list them in their website. Right? So we can extract these uh, things from Unicode Consortium website. Uh, and uh, to get the emoji meaning keywords, now you would have to uh, go to a different uh, project called CLDR uh, uh, Emoji Meanings. So they would, uh, you know, uh, for each and every new emoji, they would uh, publish the CLDR keywords in that project. So uh, once you extract them, uh, we the the pipeline you, you can you can run the same pipeline, but uh, the challenge is for uh, it it takes some time for people to use these new emojis. So uh, the the crowd generated emoji meanings might not present uh, on Emojipedia at the same time. So you may want to revisit your, sorry emoji dictionary. So you may be, want to revisit emoji dictionary. And, and see whether people have you know updated emoji meanings for those newly added emojis. So, but yeah, you can certainly do that. But uh, I would do it in two two different phases. Yeah. Any more questions? Yes. Is there any um, effort in the future? Do you think to standardize emojis the way they look and? Oh, you mean uh, how, I mean, uh, standardize how they yeah, look in black yeah, yeah. Well, uh, I, don't, I don't think that would happen. I mean, this was a common question uh, that you would find in uh, any emoji conference that you would, you would, you would go. Uh, you know, similarly, when uh, HTML tags were introduced, you know, we know that uh, even back then, uh, people want to have, you know, wanted to have authority, so they would introduce new tags that would only work with their platform. Mm. So similarly, people want to do like clever things uh, with emoji. So uh, you know, so they would come up with some cool uh, new, you know, uh, ways to show the same emoji in their platform. But uh, for, for, for certain cases, people did uh, agree on um, common depiction. So for an example, if you look at the case of gun emoji, uh, earlier all the platforms used to you know, represent uh, the gun emoji uh, by using uh, an actual handgun. So that was the picture for gun emoji. But then later, Apple decided to uh, you know, show a water pistol. Uh, uh, whenever you use the gun emoji. Now, if you look at today, all the other platforms have also, uh, you know, uh, now using water pistol. So there are instances where, you know, uh, one uh, platform provider uh, come up with, you know, some uh, new I new way to uh, represent an emoji, and the others, you know, followed you know, certainly with gun emoji. Uh, but still, I would. Well, yeah, these platform dif uh, specific differences are sort of uh, people are trying to minimize these platform different platform specific differences, but still, I would think they will not be completely eliminated. Like people try to minimize the confusions there, but still, you know, people would be want to create you. Yeah. Why do you think they're so popular? Emoji. Yeah. Good question. Is there anybody who is anybody written about there? Or? Yeah, yeah. Uh, they are, they are, yeah, they are popular due to many reasons. So uh, now, if you look at uh, writing a text, you know, uh, replying to someone with text, or uh, versus having an emoji at the end. So certainly, having an emoji would, you know would make a change. So if it is a tense situation, it would, you can use it to, you know, uh, make the other person a bit calm, you know, having an emoji uh, at the end. So, uh, and, and at the same time, uh, you know, people are busy and they sometimes they don't even like to type. So they would rather send uh, an emoji than to type like five, six characters. Mm -hmm. So, <laughs> yeah, there are, I mean, there are studies uh, as to why, uh, Emojis are popular. I think, I think yeah. uh, shortening mm. uh, what you want to convey in a shorter way, but then um, the ability to emphasize different aspects of uh, improve, improve the expression. 
or coming close to the human expression. Mm. So, for example, you may say something in the text and then put some emoji there, and that will actually say that what your text was a sarcasm, you know, mm. sarcasm. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Uh, mm. Or you know, so expressing emotions, sarcasm, intention, these sort of you know, more finer grained uh, you know, expressions that the text is not so good at, especially doing it in a very short, mm. few two, three, four, five words uh, text. Mm. That's where it plays. And then, um, on the other hand, business has found that uh, emojis uh, lead to much higher engagement. Mm. So for advertisement and many other purposes, uh, that is what worked for them too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I think it's a good you know, virtue circle going on. The younger mm. population has yeah, a lot more engaged. Yeah. Well, it is equally popular. <laughs> so there are yeah. studies that says even uh, older, older generation, like people like in mid-age, you know, use the uh, use emojis quite frequently. Like you might not think that uh, you know emojis are also popular among those ages, but yeah, they are. I guess finally, if I could ask one more question, is there something that you've learned about how to approach problems and and solve them that you'll take with you as you advance your career? Of course. So. Um, Yeah, so uh, when, when, when I started, uh, I would think uh, I didn't have a lot of the skills uh, that I possess today. Uh, so I would look at, you know, problems very differently. So I would, I, would, I would jump in to solve a problem thinking that, uh, uh, probably thinking of the first thing that comes to my mind. So. Um, the most important thing I learned uh, during this process is to see how others have attempted that problem, where they fail. So if you want to succeed, that's where you have an edge, where you can make an impact. So uh, that's what I would say. So uh, so that is that is one thing I learned. So yeah, other than that, I think in terms of Techniques and technologies, yeah, I have learned different techniques. So uh, now, if you ask me, okay, how would you solve this problem, this this type of type of problem, uh, I would say, okay, it, you know, supervised method would not work there well. So you would have used knowledge based method. If not, uh, I would say unsupervised method would not work there. You would have to use some supervised data sets and so on. Yeah. yeah. Thanks, Dr. Carlson. I also like the fact that you use lots of examples. I mean, your the the topic does lend to lend itself to that, but you did it pretty well, so which I really like. Thanks, Dr. Prasad. Actually, you asked me to have more examples. In my <laughs> okay, then I follow the theory. I did not have this many examples in my proposal. So it was one of your comments. Thank you. I. Okay, any other questions? So the thing that I would like to kind of add and you know take away is that this is an example where somebody took a topic and uh, at the time of graduation he is already considered to be he's, he's considered to be the authority. He, he organized the first you know workshop, uh, the first special issue on the topic, um, uh, anything that basically he was invited to the commercial conference to give an invited talk and knows all the people in the field. Uh, he knows all the people who are anybody in Emoji, whether they're technical or non-technical people. Uh, you might have seen the story that came in the Wired, I think, right? Uh, so I think um, you, you have to judge the technical contributions yourself on its own and the publications and see how the citations come about and they are gaining citations. But I think the other aspect of his is that um, uh, you know, a presence uh, on a world stage, I would say, not even limited to US, that is something rather unique. Not majority of the PhD students don't get at that stage. They are, they learn how to solve a problem, they're technically good, but uh, to spot um, or take up a topic that is new, totally new, not much has been worked on, and then uh, remain at the top of it. With, and that kind of shows why there were all these media things. Right? That there's some oom factor, there's some, and that has a lot of value in the real world. If you want to, um, you know, 
build something for yourself beyond being good at the technology and other things. 